Hello students, uh, I had shared one PDF document with you. This was handwritten PDF document. So uh, I like to explain this document a bit, uh, especially for those who could not attend the class for some reasons. So we'll uh, in unit four and unit five, we'll test uh, some hypothesis. And uh, these hypotheses we'll test uh, using by hand examples. So uh, in unit four, we have uh, three tests, which are Z test or Z test, T test, and ANOVA. For unit 5, we will uh, do uh, chi-square test, man whitney test, and cruz calvalis test. These, all these six tests we'll do by hand and other things we'll do using uh, SPSS software or any other software. So we'll, I'll start with uh, <coughs> unit 4. So in unit 4, we will have uh, uh, these three th tests which are Z test, T test and ANOVA and these are called as parametric test because we need uh, metric data for these tests. So what is metric data? Let's uh, have a quick example. You already know what is uh, uh, nominal, ordinal, interval and ratio. Okay. So uh, we categorize uh, the types of data or the nature of data in uh, four categories interval and finally ratio so i'm not going to explain these four you already uh, like i have already discussed these things in class so what we can uh, these two categories we can call as uh, non metric data and the remaining two categories interval and uh, ratio we can call this as metric data so uh, the first three tests we'll discuss will be uh, related to the I guess I have written this wrong. Okay, so uh, the first uh, three tests which we'll discuss, we'll talk about. We need metric data for uh, these tests. So let's uh, start with the uh, Z test or Z test. You uh, need some background information before you start the uh, Z test or Z test. Uh, so <clears throat> that background information, uh, number one, you need to know what is the process of uh, hypothesis testing. So for now, I have written uh, these seven steps of hypothesis testing. Please write these steps, pause the video. And uh, we'll, when we solve a numerical, we'll talk about these steps one by one. Okay. So now let, let me quickly read them out. First thing you'll do is set null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis. Second thing is to determine the appropriate statistical test. Third thing, set the level of significance alpha. Four, set the decision rule. 5. Collect the sample data. 6. Analyze the data. And 7. Arrive at a conclusion. So, uh, you also should know, uh, uh, I'll like elaborate a few things from this, these 7 steps. Number 1, which is like, what is, uh, how you frame your null hypothesis and how you frame your alternative hypothesis. And I'll also uh, talk about, I'll give you some shapes where you can uh, use different values of alpha. So alpha is the second step you uh, you you choose you do. So here uh, third step set the level of significance alpha. So I'll tell you how to uh, do these two things. Number one, setting the null and alternative hypothesis, and uh, then third alpha. How to uh, what is alpha and some nitty gritty about the value of alpha. So null hypothesis uh, uh, you uh, abbreviate as H naught. So null hypothesis means that uh, you are suggesting that there is no difference between the sample mean and the population mean. So null hypothesis suggests that population mean and sample mean are same. Okay. So we write this uh, mathematically as mu uh, let me just take one example. So we write, for example, um, your mu, the mean, uh, the sample mean should equal, should be equal to the population mean. Okay, and uh, we'll take some example. Like for example, if the population mean is uh, hundred, and we want to check whether uh, this population mean and the sample we have collected from somewhere, the sample mean will be same or not. This decision we'll make uh, based on some calculation of uh, Z value. 
So uh, this is how we set null hypothesis and alternate hypothesis is just opposite of it which says okay that sample uh, mean is not equal to the population mean. In this case we have taken population mean as 80. So a null hypothesis will be the mean is equal to 80 that is the null hypothesis. Alternative hypothesis can be mu mean is not equal to 80. So there can be some variation how we frame a null hypothesis. This I have discussed in classroom. So let me just recap all those things. So uh, your null hypothesis can be, for example, your mean is not equal to uh, the population mean. Okay. In the previous, in this case, we have taken population mean is 80. So our Null hypothesis will be in that case mu is equal to 80. That is null hypothesis. However, we can frame alternative hypothesis in three ways. One way of framing alternative hypothesis is H not mu is not equal to 80. And this will cover both mu is greater than 80 as well as mu is less than 80 actually either of these. So if either of these situations is true, your hypothesis will be mu is not equal to 80. Either this case is true or this is case true. It will cover both the things. And you can also form your hypothesis such that, uh, let me just write uh, again uh, as you not. So mu is equal to 80. You can also write alternative hypothesis mu is uh, equal to, sorry, mu is greater than 80. So when you write greater than 80, it means you are testing a uh, one-tailed hypothesis. We call it one-tailed hypothesis. You are just testing greater than one-tailed hypothesis and for greater than, we call it right-tailed. I will show you a diagram for it. Right Okay. And if it is uh, less than, we call it left tailed. So we can write the uh, same thing and let me write it again. H not same. Um, let me just write it. H not mu is equal to 80 and H1 mu is less than 80. Now less than means it is of course one tailed but it is left tailed, left tail hypothesis. So you understand the concept of mu uh, is not equal to 80, mu is not equal to 80, mu is less than 80 and mu is greater than 80. So here we call it two tail test. This is uh, less than left tailed and this is greater than right tail test and I will elaborate this thing further with the help of a help of an example. So I have written it here in uh, this. So if you uh, you can see here this one is right tailed only we are testing mu is greater than the population mean and we have taken different level of significance. In th these examples mu is we are testing mu is less than the population mean and in this example we are testing mu is not equal to population mean. You can pause the video and have a look at these. Now I will talk about how and uh, what test we have to choose. So uh, we have six tests. I will only discuss about these six tests. So first I will talk about when we choose uh, to conduct Z test. So Z test, the uh, first important thing about all parametric tests, the data need to be metric data. This is true for all the parametric tests. So we are doing a Z test, T test and ANOVA. For all these uh, tests you need uh, metric data and in case of ANOVA your dependent variable should be a metric. You have groups in ANOVA. So and T test you have two groups and uh, uh, the mean you are testing for each of these groups, uh, measure, the variable you are measuring, the dependent variable should be metric and T test also and for, for Z test also. All these tests your dependent variable should be metric. <coughs> then uh, what other things you need to understand about Z test is uh, you 
between Z test and T test, uh, they are quite similar tests. You'll know when we do some numer numericals. So uh, between Z test and T test, your sample size uh, for Z test should be greater than 30. So if it is greater than 30, you go for the Z test. Other thing which is important for Z test is uh, apart from uh, sample size is more than 30, uh, in Z test, your your uh, population standard deviation should be known. Uh, we write uh, population standard deviation as sigma. So your population standard deviation should be known. Okay. Uh, when we do t test, uh, you can use sample standard deviation instead of uh, population standard deviation. Uh, 